I wonder which movie it was Daniel Craig stopped giving a fuck. Now, up front, I'm not much of a James Bond fan. I don't dislike Bond by any means, it just wasn't my thing. The only movies I've ever seen were Goldeneye and The World Is Not Enough. And come to think of it, I don't think I've finished either of those films. So if there are any previous issues or positives from Daniel Craig's term that I'm unaware of, you won't hear them here. This is going to be a one-and-done review from someone who isn't a fan, so my analysis won't be blinded by nostalgia or anger. Going into No Time to Die, I had three primary questions. Is the film good or bad? Does a movie feel like an appropriate send-off? Lastly, was the trailer accurate and did it confirm our fears of political influence on the film? The answer is kind of in the middle because it sways back and forth like a drunken paraplegic. Let me explain. Firstly, the trailer showed Bond riding bitch seat to Lashana Lynch. Her character Nomi was shown to be a diversity hire that caused a schism online. This is thankfully not the case here. She certainly starts off as a bitch because she was given the 007 agent title in Bond's absence. So it makes sense she's a little prideful. So as the two of them continue to banter and she learns that he is better than her at her own job, instead of throwing a tantrum and making a political statement, she quietly grows to respect him and they see each other as equals. Nomi even requests that Bond receive the 007 moniker temporarily to finish the mission at hand. So I'm pleasantly surprised by that. On the other side of the coin, Agent What's-Her-Dick at the party is frantic and anxious like a kid going home with bad grades on his report card. At one point, she's dual-wielding two guns, one of which is a submachine gun that buff security guards and even Bond himself have to hold tight with two hands. Yet she one-hands that SMG like the daughter handled the shotgun in A Quiet Place too. <sighs> Moving on, from a technical level, this film looks and feels great for the most part. Bond might as well be a paraplegic with all the explosions he survives. I don't know why this odd tendency, but Act 1 practically opens with a mausoleum exploding with Bond on the doorstep. And it didn't fall apart either. It's reduced to dust on the wind like Grandma Shapiro, yet Bond gets up and walks walks away. After repeated explosions in similar settings, there was a scene later on I half expected Bond to kick in the door charred and smoking like Wile E. Coyote. On top of all of this, Craig is getting older. He's in his mid-fifties now, so when he has to get physical, it shows. Not that you can't be healthy at any age. Hell, Joe Rogan could probably kick a tree in half and he's the same age. However, there are lots of moments when Bond is just walking by with a group of guys shooting at him, yet he doesn't get hit once. Even standing on an open rail balcony with Nomi, and while surrounded by a dozen plus guards, no one can shoot them like everyone went to stormtrooper school. Now, all of this aside, the plot is just okay. At almost three hours, this film chooses to go over a lot that probably could have been ignored. The actual opening scene, for example, could have been waved off. Why didn't the film just start with Bond and Madeline in Italy? How about the issue of Safin's goal being the elimination of both Spectre and Bond, but then Bond is spared? Also, I'm an everyman. So when this ultimate weapon infects people and it's explained to be nanobots, my first thought on my way home was you just need to disrupt the coding, right? They are electrical. They are a machine, after all, so why not just stuff someone infected with the nanobots into an MRI scanner? Or hell, just stand them next to an EMP bomb. Bond survives bombs all the time, so why the fuck not? Even with all of this, the film does conclude with a neat bow and a ballsy ending, and the writing ain't bad. I brought up many of the negatives because those stand out, while much of what the film does get right doesn't. While mostly unremarkable, it is still an alright watch. I think it best said that No Time to Die seems like a means to an end for an actor who has publicly stated he didn't want to return to this role unless the paycheck was fat. And to get Daniel Craig back, it must have been fat. It had to have been fat like Godzilla vs. Rosie O'Donnell. Now, thanks for watching. Please like, share, ring the bell for notifications. And if you want to watch more movie reviews, then subscribe and watch me tear a new asshole into Venom, Let There Be Carnage at the link over there. And I'll see you in the next video.